Hi everyone, welcome to Greg's Workshop. Um, I got another new addition to the to the workshop today. Yesterday, this little metal shear. It's a 300 mil. Got about 200 mil cut on it. Um, that's the brand. Checking down in here. You can see that. It's a solid little thing. Good for cutting. I'll put this down and back it down again in a minute and I'll show you some cutting. So that's all set up. I carry a piece of another piece of tin, uh, panel steel. Uh, I got it from Paramount Browns here in Australia. The only thing it didn't come with wasn't in the box was the metal safety pin that goes in here and then the circuit little circuit goes over the end well, I put a bolt in there with a nut which does well just in case one of the kids come in to decide to play Dopey Dopey Dora I'm going to cut this one from this line right through okay as soon as I set the depth of this, so it doesn't pop up and be right. moved off. I moved it off a little bit too far, but I'm gonna do a bit thick of a cut. Because I want to go from one end, goes underneath, and the other end goes over the top. We'll see if we can get it to do that. Yep. Very good. Very good. No burr, not much. A little bit, not much. Oh, worked out very good. Yeah, but not much burrs on the cut side neither. Doesn't leave a sharp edge. So, it doesn't leave a sharp edge, so you can see that. Um, that's pretty good. Yeah, I paid $65 for it. They got one there exactly the same. But see that it handles square box. This is a little short handle, which I don't mind. Um, they had one there with fitted in here, but made out of quarter inch steel, solid steel, and it sat there really nice and tight, about, <coughs> about 700, about 600 long, had a rub, no rubber handle, just a piece of flat steel, that went 110. The only gripe that I got is that it never had that metal pin. It should have had it, it's a safety issue on them. It come with the pin, it should have been in the box, but it wasn't. So next time I go to Paramount Browns, I will be saying um, yada, yada, yada to them. But that's not their fault. They get it out of a box in the, in the storage, and that's the way I got it. No, it's a nice little shear. I had to do some tightening up these and set them up a little bit, tighten up, put the handle on it. The adjustment for this thickness of steel very sharp. So. Right. Now, I'm going to try and set this camera up a little bit better. I've got to go and get some stuff that I made months ago. But someone reminded me when I um, when I uh, when I sat down that I had them. I forgot to introduce them and show them to you. They're part of my hammering block.
These are the things I made. This Trev got them. Trev on um, Trev's blog. He made these out of thicker steel. Put your uh, hammer and dolly, the dolly bits in. I said I made these months ago, sitting in the, uh, sitting in the, um, <laughs> sitting in the um, drawer. I wonder why I cut this dolly. It's a square dolly. It's in both. It sits on an angle in one. Right. Sits tight. Doesn't sit that one really well. It's a little bit different in shape. Right. This one sits beautiful. Put that in the hole in your in my hammer stretcher. Shrink and stretcher block up there. My hammer block, the one I made. And you can bang metal all day, roll it over on its edge. But I'm going to make one with another couple with rod and to fit that hole in the shape over there. But I didn't even remember I had these. And Trev come up showing me what he made, showing everyone what he made for the dollies. And I said, Oh, you must have six cents or something. I, I had these and I pulled them out and put them on the bench and coat them with paint. Just give them a coat with paint. Because they weren't painted. No, they were tempered. These are hard. These are bloody hard. You could flog them with a sledgehammer, you wouldn't fucking hurt them. You wouldn't hurt them. Except for this one. I don't know whether to, now this one's for flat, a bit of flat pounding. You can sit the round dollies in, the other dollies in. I'm well, not in this one so much, but in uh, in this one, it takes the half moon dolly flat with the round going up and down. You can use it either way or turn it on a side side and you can use the shape around to shape something else to get that curve. All right, I've done that. Um, I've got a couple of items I've got to get. Oh, I said I've got a um, English wheel and a power hammer. And that's basically the all the other tools that I need to get off to keep on going, but all the toolboxes, like tools I've got, I said mainly tools like these things, like spinners and sockets and stuff. I haven't got many of them. I've only got this box and a couple of them in there and the other boxes of all my dad's stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, I got electric motors, jacks, I've got uh, fills for taking off your uh, oil fillers, so you know, you don't have to drive a hammer through the screwdriver through them no more, have oil coming all over your face, but these big sockets will fit on any fuel filler bait. I bought the whole lot, there's, there's probably 50 in one box. Very good idea. I said, yeah, I said, um, I've got a van, I bought, finally got an anvil 
but it's not here yet. I've got to go pick it up. Not, not this week. Not next week. The following week. It's a, it's a cast iron or cast steel. It's got a, it's a hundred and ten pound, hundred and ten kilo uh, hammer. Um, it's about probably this long, probably twenty two inches long by six inches wide. It's pretty heavy. I said, no, I, mate, I had trouble trying to pick it up. I said, and the bloke had only had one of them, so he tucked it away in his office for me with soul written on it. So I've got that there to get it. I said, I'd like to be able to get a heap of other stuff, but I'm going to try and struggle along. I've got to start buying, um, got to go at the back and start chiseling concrete away. Um, it's going to take me forever. I know, I don't think I'll probably need new fingers after I'm finished. Anyone going to donate? <laughs> probably melt them with a hammer. No. No, this is, this is a good, good little thing. I said I've been, I, I knew it was there. I said I went down and seen him at Paramount Grounds. They got the, a lot of stuff that I'd like to get. I've got to get a parts washer in here somewhere. Put a parts washer in here. Uh, so I can wash down the car parts and clean them. Everything works. I said I just put uh, new belts on me snare, belt sander over there, the one I just bought. I said I'm going to increase it up to um, it stems at 1400 revs, a bit slow, but I'm going to increase it to 28. So it'll have a three horsepower motor on it, spins at 2800. That should be plenty. Packs good. It wears belts good. I took the stick on a nine inch, um, nine inch buddy stick on off it and put a Velcro pad on it. Get them from on the um, power and grounds uh, for about 15 bucks. I said the sanding pads are the dearest. They go from range from $13 to $21. And I need a, probably a about five different more grades. We've only got the three, a 40, um, 120, and a 80, I think. Yeah, 120 and an 80. I've got to get up to some 600s and stuff. I've got to get some, uh, I want to get about 10 of each so I can hang them on the walls, so I've got plenty. Yeah, so I've got a lot of grinding to do, a lot of sand. I've done a lot of grinding with those things. It works perfect. I said I ground this pin yesterday, this pin, and I've got my little square here somewhere. Where are you? Little, little square. Yeah, people can see this. I got nothing between there and there. No light, no nothing. Very good. Same with the other side. I got nothing. No light. It's good to cut that as smooth as a baby's bum. Hey? Chop that off, no problems. And square that up because my Mansell is not cutting straight at the moment. It seems to want to lay over when it hits that little broken piece of, um, got a broken belt, a piece broken out of it. And every time it hits that, it wants to move the saw in a bit. So I've got to replace the blade. I've got a couple up there. I said, I've been going to mean to order a heap of blades. All the same, a couple of ones a bit quicker for aluminium. I want to get some aluminium ones for cutting aluminium, a couple for cutting stainless steel, copper. You can buy all these different types of blades, you can change them over to cut whatever you want. <coughs> not, not really used to any, any kind of using one blade. Oh, oh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm nearly over my flu, thank bloody Christ. I was that bloody sick a few days ago, I said, 
you fellas probably on, on YouTube and all that probably know how sick I was. I said, I've been getting a lot of people looking at my site and having a look and watching the videos, but no one's telling me what they think. I said, I've got a few up, up, updates and a few, a few thumbs up and um, good people like my shop said I had a good, nice looking workshop. But this is only part of my workshop. This is Greg's workshop and I'm got my restorer side, which I haven't started yet. It's got to go on the, on the sign, on underneath. When I get my, when I get it going, I restore motorcycles and I restore cars. I build hot rod cars. I don't care what the laws say, I just build them. I said, I, my car, I can do what I want with it. I said, I don't care, it's not dangerous. I'm not driving it like a lunatic. I said, I drove this car for 20 years, mate. I, it, I put it on the road three times, mate. I had it registered, full, full done. Drove down the corner to the shop. Cop pulled me over, I wanted to have a look. I give him all the details, he want no license or nothing, just want to have a look at my car. Because everyone in this area knows who I am, knows what I'm doing with my car. What happened with my car, I said, this. when I start on that, I said, I don't know what to do. I said, I had a bloke paint it. He, arsehole, painted it with, it just was shocking. All the paint come off it, they blamed the company that, well, we use Pertec paint, right? I use Pertec. Um, it's very good paint, very easy to use. Um, you, you can't go wrong with it. Water and paint don't mix. Water and this stuff don't mix. You can't put um, high bill primer on the roof and block it down with water. It's a dry pad only. No water. They had all the sill panels in behind these rear quarters on my car were full of water. For two years they took it there to paint it. Two bloody years, mate. I got it home three months. It was back in their shop. I've got pictures of what they've done. What my brand new interior. Over fifteen thousand dollars worth of work I had done on the interior with everything. And they just put stuff on seats. They sat in there with dirty fucking clothes on, big chunks of fucking metal hanging off them. Didn't care. That they fucked it. I'm swearing, I apologise. Because it makes me very mad. I said, the cop, the judge ordered him to pay me a certain amount of money. I still haven't seen it. I've had the sheriff's department looking for him. Shit, he won't come out of his house. He won't, he won't, the sheriff's department can't get him. I said, my car's been sitting because he owes me about 15,000, probably more now. I won the thing for 15000 what it cost me to get it back to this far after all the roof, roof dents, the roof damage, all the quarter panel damages, all the back here was just full of bog and drilled holes in it in perfectly good panels for the bog to stick and slapped it full of body filler and the panel wasn't even dented. I don't know what to do. I said, I know what I'd like to do, but that's against the bloody law. I said, criminals got more rights than we got these days. They can do whatever they like. We can't do jack shit to protect ourselves. They can break into your house and fall through your roof and sue you for your roof for hurting them. They're, they're breaking into your home, trying to steal your shit, you bash them. You hit them with an iron bar or something while they're inside your lounge room. They sue you for the damages, what you caused to them. Well, they're trying to rob you under attacking you. 
That's pure bullshit. Whoever's in that law, mate, wants his ass kicking for me to murk and back. I said they get caught in anyone who catch in here, mate. I catch them in here. They won't be coming out of here only in, a, in bits and pieces in a bag. Well, I better not say that. <coughs> Don't worry, I've had a nice fair share of people fucking stealing from us. My missus won't leave the house because of people who... We went away for the weekend the first time and she'd been away since her husband passed away. And we'd been together uh, years before that. We went away, we were going out, going everywhere. Now, huh, I gotta stay here. Or she's gotta stay here. Now the boy's home, instead of finding his own place to live. He's staying here now. Um, he's got a job. He can't do nothing during the day. So wait for him to go to work. So I'm gonna stop babbling on. I've made these and I said thanks for reminding me, Trev. <laughs> um, I'm going to make some other corner blocks for these. I'm, gonna, I'm looking for a piece of two inch, like two and a half inch high. Well, probably about the same height as this and the same width as this and I'm going to mill the end like a piece of angle iron. I might even put a piece of angle iron in there yet. If I get a piece to sit there, in the, in, it'll sit in that groove and use it to shape of shape metal. I'm going to make some more when I can find my other, I can't even pronounce them properly. They're like this but they've got a curve on the top. Trev was made, Trev made his blocks for it, for his dolly, and he did them. I said, yeah, I said, I sat on the belt grinder too. I used a piece of inch stuff over there. I cut it in half and put it on here and then ground the top flat. This has got an angle on it. It goes back that way. So when you put it on your block, when you're hitting at it, you hit this way and you push it against that hard edge or when you turn it around you pull it this way you hit and pull and that stress the metal this way a lot of people don't think you know what you're doing but people say hey well, how did you learn all this stuff I had some of the best panel bleeders tell me show me how to do things um, I had an old bloke show me how to lead white I've done it once with him and I done one one section while he was still doing the other section. I finished my section and I was starting to file it down. And he come over and he looked at me. You finished? Yeah. He went down there and you sit down. I'm gonna do this. And he filed it all down, made sure everything stuck. I'm qualified to lead boy. Very good at it, he reckons. <laughs> I can't, can't do nothing now, the poor old bugger, he's died. He helped me do my roof, I owe him a lot of grey, I'm not mentioning his name. I'm not going to bring that up in, in this the subject, because he's gone now, there's no sense in doing him any, any harm. He had nothing to do with my car on that other lot, but one day I'll see this quick walking down the street and then my next vlog will probably be in, in jail. 60 fucking three year old man belts, 40 year old for, for stuffing up his car. And then when the paint came off it, he wasn't doing nothing, he wouldn't do nothing because the paint company wouldn't cover the damage wouldn't come to the party and do the full full rebuild of the car because it has to be stripped right back and do a redo all over again. I think he had plans on doing that and making the company pay for the car to be done properly and he'd strip it back and he'll fix it properly. But didn't do that and he'd be shot through. Anyhow, I'm just going to leave you at that. 
All right, you can do, um, give me a thumbs up. Please leave a comment with the thumbs up or share or pass along. Um, or give me an A, you know what the A means. No, yes, no. Tell me what you think. What's the quality of the videos? I know the quality, the sound's not real good because I was croaky and all that, but when I talk properly, when I get it done, I, it comes out good. The video side of it, I reckon it's got a good picture. But I'd like to hear some other people tell me some if it's a good picture or shit picture. I don't want no dickheads on the thing coming back and saying, oh, you should use this, you should use that. Mate, I can't read. I gotta use what I can I can I know that works. I don't edit. Everything goes straight from this camera to the computer and upload. I watch it, make sure it's all right and there's no glitches in it. If there is a tracking point, I reset it and get it to retract until it's right and then I upload it. And then it should be right. Well, I'm gonna go now. I've got some more work, more work to finish before uh, it's, it's four to the five. Yeah, I've got a bit more to take this off the bench. Um, sit it up behind a big press up there and that where it will sit for its duration till it be used for something. Anyhow, yeah, all right, I'll love you and leave you and wish you all the best. I'll see you when I see you. Bye.